I'm Joe Stuckstio, and my, my project is the Rainforest Motion Display. So again, the quick overview on it, um, in the, you know, my early projection was that I wanted a bunch of different animals to be able to roam around an environment, a jungle, rain, well, rainforest to be specific, actually, and uh, you'd be able to select each one, and whenever you select that one, you gain a control scheme that relatively mimics that animal. And theoretically, you kind of learn a little bit about animals while you uh, navigate the environment and kind of watch them roam and all that good stuff. So, First of all, the actual product and how it works. The animals themselves, the AI behavior is one of the biggest and most complicated things. That's my current behavior tree, which is actually the simplest of all of them because I had to simplify it to get everything else to go together in time. Um, but the key emphasis behind how they behave is they kind of wander around. There's a large environment that they're able to freely navigate. They're able to uh, decrease their hydration as they move. And then eventually when they get dehydrated enough, they'll go towards one of the water sources and rehydrate. As far as their movement goes, because the AI, again, is kind of my most complicated system, on our ground, I have a nav mesh agent. This takes the terrain, computes the terrain to a series of grid points, and then from there is able to actually calculate paths and path generation. I say this because, as you will see, it's a complicated terrain environment, as well as a lot of obstacles. So uh, this whole nav mesh agency system helps manage all of that and prevent all kinds of collisions, as well as you know ensure that things can go only where they can go. And then also on the flight side, because there's also birds in the system, they have perches. Perches are connecting to trees, so at some of the tallest trees, they, uh, birds can come over and perch, and it has certain capacities. Most of them are capacity of one, but uh, some of the trees are a little bigger, and two or three can fit within the perch, and they will go and simply approach it on their lawn. As far as the controls go, there are three main animals implemented control-wise and through to the end, uh, end. That is the toucan, the sloth, and the snake. Toucan is our flying animal. This has one of the most satisfying actions, I would say, of all the control schemes. It basically tracks your head. If you're trying to pitch up, it will fly up, but it'll do it slower because obviously you wouldn't have as much speed moving upwards. Same thing with down, it'll pick up more speed if you're going downwards. But instead of having to make somebody stand around and rotate, you can instead just tilt your head left or right and it will cause you to rotate instead. Um, this is actually really satisfying in practice and like I said, it's probably my favorite of the system. The sloth works much like many other VR grab systems you've seen before where you can grab onto trees and such in order to climb them. A uh, little fun fact about sloths, they were actually the animal that kind of started my whole project and the reason why it is. Um, sloths actually don't have to use their muscles like at all to hang. In fact, sloths often when they die will stay hanging in trees because their muscles don't need to be activated. So uh, part of the control scheme for a sloth includes you know, not having to stay gripped onto something in order to stay up in the tree you want to. And then the bottom we have snakes. Snakes are kind of the simplest form, more or less follows the nav mesh, but you kind of have to wiggle left and right theoretically. It uses the triggers instead to simplify the action, such that you can project yourself through the environment. Um, and then for the most part, they all use some form of head tracking to kind of get that orientation and distance, since that's pretty reliable. Now on to demonstration. Did it switch over? So you guys should be able to see the world, is that correct? That's right. Yep. All right, so here you can see the world. Right now we're starting as a snake. Now what you can see is a couple of the other ones lying around. There's also some sloths that are kind of around. Uh, sometimes they sit and spot and move. Other times they float around and go to different locations. Currently in the sloth control system, this is that left-right wiggle. Um, right now I have my debug cursor up just because it was not working initially on the load as all of our fun things tend to do. Um, here, if we uh, approach a tree, and I'm not going to smack into this TV, preferably, um, and we go to switch over to our sloth control, you can see I can grab the tree and climb, and, and climb, if the detection will work. Okay. The theoretical aspect of climbing is here, though. As you see, it's the grab-based system, so you can grab onto an obstacle and then move relative to that. And then the most satisfying of them all comes to the toucan. 
So there is a button on here to automatically switch between the three. Otherwise, when you look at something, you can have the option to use the top button to select to whatever the control scheme of that animal is. Here we can see that toucan flight. Again, tilting your head does the actual rotation, which uh, is actually a fairly human thing. Your head will naturally tilt a little bit when you rotate yourself anyway. So to actually have the head tilt be on your master rotation ends up being fairly intuitive. I'm somebody who actually gets fairly prone to motion sickness in VR, so when it did not give me motion sickness, it was one of the first things that I uh, really clung to. Overall here again, you can see as I look at things, the little selection cursor in Nerum uh, ends up snapping to them. You can see a bunch of the birds flying around and the snakes kind of on the ground as I go past them. But overall, this is the project and uh, I can keep flying around while I answer questions if you guys have any.